All right, I'm here today working on the C47 behind me. It's basically the same thing as a DC-3. It's a military variant. Luckily, it's got an Artex 345 already installed, so this should be pretty straightforward. Let's get to it. All right, so now we got the ELT out. We're gonna do the inspection as per 91207D. Now, one of the things, and the first thing on there, is you gotta check for proper insulation. So I already looked and verified that this thing is mounted in the correct orientation. It's solid, there's no flex in the mount. Everything's good as far as that's concerned. Also, I've already taken a look at the battery. There's no corrosion or issues. This is a lithium battery. So this thing is good to go. The next thing I wanna check is for operation of the controls and also sufficient signal strength through the antenna. With a 121.5 ELT, that's pretty easy, but with a 406 ELT, you need a special setup. So let me show you what we're gonna do. So this is a tester I put together. It's got everything I need to test for 406 ELTs. And probably the most important part of this test setup is not only the tester itself, but this case right here. As you can see, it's got a lining in it. Basically, this is a Faraday cage. This is copper and nickel material, which has been lined through and through, and it's all the way on the edges. So it's conductive and completely shielded from outside signals. And what that does, is that allows me to activate the ELT, put it inside here, close the cover, and not radiate signal out to the COSPIS SARSAT satellites and trigger an emergency beacon rescue situation. First thing I wanna do is connect this to my antenna cable and then also connect my test setup to my tester. One more thing to note, in order to activate the crash sensor in this, I need to jump a couple pins together. So I made a little test jumper that has to be installed, otherwise this thing won't activate. Now going into my uh, ELT tester, I turn it on and I get it all set up and calibrated and ready for the new test. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna clear out the memory, select what frequency it's on. I'm gonna let it auto select because I don't know exactly the 406, but once I'm ready, I just activate it. Now this thing's good to go, okay? And this test, both 121.5 and 406. So with the ELT itself, I'm gonna actually engage the crash sensor. And you can see the 121.5 is going off and you can see that the uh, ELT is activated. Now I'm gonna close the test setup and seal it because the 406 won't go off for 50 seconds approximately. So I gotta wait about a minute before it actually sends out a 406 test signal. So. I'm gonna let that sit in here. I'm actually gonna let it cycle three to five times before I conclude the test. And if I want, I can go ahead and silence this, but you can hear that it's activated. And what's in here is actually a very low grade AM radio. That's what you want to actually do the test for 121.5. So I did get one 406 first that came through here. I'm gonna let it cycle a few more times and I'm gonna check my data. Okay, now that this thing's putting out 406, it's giving me all the data. It's showing that I'm getting good tests on both. It's telling me the type of beacon. It's telling me the serial number. It doesn't have any position data. It's telling me where it's registered to and so forth. So yeah, I'm getting good tests on here. This thing is passing the, uh, the signal strength test through the antenna. Now I'm gonna reinstall it. Now that I'm done with the test, I can just go ahead and reset the ELT turn it on and then back to off, which is also arm. And this thing is good to go back in the airplane. Obviously while I'm here, I wanna note the battery date. So this thing is good until April, 2029. And then if I need any of the other data off the side for my logbook, now's a good time to get it. And if I want all the data stored inside my tester, so I can go and look at the ELT test, it tells me the frequency modulation power, all that stuff was good, it tells me exactly how much power and exactly what frequency it's on. I can look at the details from previous tests as well and why it failed. And I can cross check that against COSPIS SAR set requirements. Here's the test I just did. You can see that it passed, pretty easy to tell, green light. 
tells me the exact frequency, modulation, power output, clocking rate, cycle times, everything that's required per the COSPIS SARSAT 406 requirements. Last but not least, I just need to do one last test, put the ELT back in the airplane, do a self test through the panel switch, set up my tester in uh, field strength mode, and it'll receive a signal through the antenna, and that's that. ELT check will be ops check good. That's about as solid of an ELT as I've ever seen mounted. This one doesn't have thumb screws, so even worse, they're slotted flathead screws, so that's kind of a pain. I think I might upgrade this in the future, but for now, it's just going back together. We'll sign it off and move on after we do our one last check. I've got to set up my tester on a cart or on some sort of non-ferrous material. Put it a calibrated distance away from the antenna, so in this case, I'm using about 10 feet. All right, so now I got my cart and my distance all set up. I'm gonna go and do one self test. Sorry. Just going inside the airplane here, going up to the cockpit, gonna hit the switch, push it for one second. Should flash, beep five times, telling me everything's okay as long as uh, there's no internal errors. There we go, it's flashing and it's beeping in the back, you can't hear it, but five flashes or five beeps tells me everything checks out except no GPS position data, which is expected because the aircraft and GPS is powered down. Let's go see what it recorded back at the unit. It's kind of cool. And there we are. Everything checked out good. Well, there you have it. The long and the short of 406 ELT checks. No pun intended. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think. Curious what you guys are doing for this stuff. And look forward to see you on the next one.